All right, so I mentioned there's been a lot of improvements to the way that racks work in Ableton Live. I have a drum rack here that was created by taking a drum loop that I just found in my samples. I searched for loop. I found a random loop. I think this might even be the one. Uh, and then from there, I dragged it into an audio track and I sliced it to a new MIDI track. All right, that feature, there's nothing all that new and special about that for Live 11. But what I ended up with is this MIDI clip here. Uh, it was a four bar drum loop. I just looped the first bar of uh, slices. I quantized the slices. I rearranged them a little bit. And uh, all of this is contained within a drum rack. And the little loop sounds like this. Okay, cool, that's fine. Now the thing is, is that this uh, is all contained within a drum rack now. And I have all these small slices inside of a drum rack and there's eight macro knobs. When you slice uh, audio to a new MIDI track, by default you get four knobs, four macro knobs that will control the amplitude envelope. Uh, and then four knobs that will control the loop length of the individual slices. Now what's cool about this is that when I look to the left, I see that there's some additional buttons that I didn't notice before. And there's a plus and a minus button. These will allow me to add additional macros, which is pretty nice because now that all this stuff is sliced, I don't really wanna get rid of the um, macro assignments that were already here before. It's actually pretty useful and I'll show you why in a bit. But there might be a couple additional things that I want to map myself. For example, uh, let me see what slices I'm using. All right, so there's two snares, slice five and slice 12. It'd be kind of cool to maybe have one of these go through some delay. Let me go ahead and grab an audio effect and let's just grab a delay. Drag and drop this directly on slice five. And I wanna see what's here in slice five. See the devices, if I double click on the name, I can see this is the slice inside of a simpler. More importantly though, here's the delay device that I just added. What I think it'd be cool is, uh, let's play this and just hear how it sounds first. Okay, that's cool. That adds some nice syncopation, I like it a lot. What could be nice is to be able to adjust maybe the sync rate so I can change the rhythm of this. Um, and if I wanted to, I could even adjust the dry web, but let's just keep it simple. Since this is contained inside of my drum rack, the macro knobs that are over here can be mapped to anything nested within the rack, right? So I can assign macro knob nine to control the dry wet value of my delay. That could be pretty cool. So there's a couple ways I can approach this. Uh, one way I could do this is by hitting the map button on top of the macro knobs. And then everything inside the rack that can be mapped to a macro turns this weird green color. I'm gonna click on the thing I wanna map, which in this case will be the uh, sync rate, all right, this is the sync rate for the left side, and now I can hit a map button to map it to that macro. Now the nice thing about this is that the left and right side in this case, they're linked together, so when I adjust the left side, the right side will get adjusted as well. All right, cool, let me turn that off. Okay, that's cool, it's a nice subtle change. Now. We were able to map things to macros before. Having the additional, additional macro knobs is a new thing. Another very cool thing that we can do is that we can randomize the value of all these macros by simply hitting the rand button up here. So let's just check this out really quickly. Why is this happening? Because there's settings for a loop down here. And if we turn that loop off. Oh, it's, it's, there we go. There we go. We can adjust this a bit. Okay, now all of that's really cool, but you notice when I started to randomize this, once I got far away from the place that I wanted to be, it was kind of difficult to get back there. Well, what's an easier way to uh, maybe store a specific snapshot or state of our macro knobs uh, so that we don't have that same problem. The answer would be macro variations. We're going to check that out in the very next video.